the greediest person on earth. A phrase so powerful that it's not even said a lot in humanity. But you can typically hear this phrase used to describe any car salesman, a crying baby, or even cookie monster. But I personally use this phrase to describe someone else. Someone so greedy they make Mr. Krabs look like a complete and utter angel. And that person is Greg Hefley. And truthfully, he doesn't even deserve all the dramatics. He's not even scary. He's as scrawny as a seven-year-old, gets no girls, and even gets manipulated by his three-year-old brother. And I know you may be thinking, just because he's a scrawny, lonely dork that doesn't give you the right to call him greedy, and a statement like that would actually be valid if you've never read the books or even seen the movies. So I would like to bring one of Greg Healthy's victims, Riley Jefferson, to the stand to talk about all the trauma he faced while being friends with Greg. So Riley, take it away. I, I couldn't get Riley to do the video, so I'm just gonna go over all of his Greg trauma for him. So let's start off with the first film. The movie starts off with Greg being tricked into thinking he had to go to school a week before he actually had to by his older brother, Roger. And when I first saw this scene, I automatically wondered what did Greg do to deserve this hostile treatment? But after I kept watching, I soon found out why Roger did this devious act towards Greg. It's because Greg is a diabolical bully. I mean, three minutes after all of this happened, Greg was already throwing shots at Riley. But I'm gonna be fine. It's my best friend, Riley Jefferson, I'm worried. He's definitely not middle school ready. So because he enjoys to go to the ball pit, he's not middle school ready. Greg, the ball pit is for men. And women, I can't forget about those. Ladies hit my line, but mostly for men. And I honestly don't even know why I'm getting upset about this because look at Greg and look at Riley. They're incomparable. Riley gets girls, Riley wins fights, and most importantly, he has drip. Greg has none of these traits, which makes him a full-blown loser. Then Greg continues to commit more nefarious activities towards Riley, like breaking his arm, which I personally wouldn't let slide. Spray painting his bike in order to make him look cooler, which I think he kind of sort of maybe needed. Cute butt. But the worst on this list was definitely Greg blaming Riley for child endangerment. This man Greg had the audacity to lead some kids into a ditch, leave them, then blame it all on Riley so he doesn't lose his precious spot on the safety patrol. If this isn't the definition of a greedy scumbag to you, I don't know what is. And this is kind of just a recap of what he's done to Riley in the first movie slash book, because the other movies are no better. In Roger Rules, he let Riley sit on a ball with spikes in it for some views. In Dog Days, he called the cops on Riley's family. And in The Long Call, he, um... What is this? But I know you see the pattern here. No matter how much they grow old and continue to make memories together, Greg will always torture Riley. But if I'm keeping it a buck, he's actually like this to everyone. Like, here's him making his mom stand outside in the rain, my mom will whoop my butt. Here's him throwing apples at Patty Farrell, she slick kinda deserved it. And he even got his entire family pooped on by some birds. So as you can see, it doesn't matter what universe it is, Greg Hefley is the worst person on earth. And I know this video is about him being greedy, so I won't say much on it, but this dude is also a simp. Running through a senior center in his underwear, lying about his family getting to the bag enough to be country club members. These are all things this man did to get with the girl from Jesse. And although he did end up getting her at the end, she should have been with me. That clip cut off. I was trying to say she should have been with Ming Johnson, another character in the movie. So if there was any confusion, those were the words that came out of my mouth. But like I was saying, this man Greg would do anything for Holly Hills. I mean, bro was so down bad that he was even willing to go on a date with Sharab Gupta, another kid from Jesse. And you may be wondering what I mean by this. So let me explain. In the second Diary of a Wimpy Kid movie, Greg made a joke about not being able to see Sharab because he's, you know, short. Then once everyone was done literally laughing in his face, Sharab said these words, letting the audience know he was gonna get his revenge. You may be able to dominate me physically, Greg Hefley, but mentally, I am the more muscular. Anyway, later on in the movie, Sharag left a note in Greg's locker insinuating that he was Holly. And the note basically said to me, her or him in the art room. I don't really know what they're identifying as in this scene. Please don't cancel me, Twitter. But once Greg got to the art room, he was confessing all of his feelings. Then about a second later, he found out he was talking to King Sharag. Oh! So what I got from this scene was Greg got what he deserved and Sharag is an absolute W. Anyway, I think that's gonna be it for this rant. As always, join my Discord and follow me on Twitter. And in conclusion, Roderick is the best character, Manny is an alpha male, and Greg sucks. <sighs> Greg? Well, what the hell?